Hello everyone, uh, before we get into today's video, uh, I wanted to say a massive thank you for getting me to the amazing milestone of 10,000 subscribers. Never imagined I'd get to this point, let alone get there as soon as this, in basically 8 months of me doing this fairly regularly. It's completely blown me away, so thank you ever so much for getting me here. So to mark the milestone, I will have a 10,000 subscriber special in the form of a Q&A, albeit with a slight twist. Feel free to post your questions in the comment section down below. If I somehow get too many questions, which I can't imagine is hugely likely, then I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer all of them, however I'll do my best. Once again, thank you ever so much for getting me to this point. I look forward to hearing what questions you have to ask, however, Let's take a look at another street circuit. Switzerland, a country very much known in the motorsport landscape as not having all that many motorsport events. Obviously that's down to how after the 1955 Le Mans disaster, the country banned motor racing. However, in 2015, a motion was put forward by Swiss national councillor Fathi Derda to allow for electric cars to be exempt from the ban, which would come to fruition. I wonder which series this would benefit. Now, let me think about this one. Uh, ah, I've got it. Euro NASCAR. Incredibly, that though wouldn't be the series to have motorsport return to Switzerland. Instead, it would be Formula E with a street race in Zurich. Funny that. Whilst it was initially intended to be the city of Lugano that would host the race, ultimately Zurich, the country's largest city, was given the nod where which a course was constructed. A course made up of 11 turns, with 7 to the left and 4 to the right, and also being 1.5 miles slash 2.4 kilometers in length. I mean, certainly from the pictures, it does look like a great area to host a race, albeit it might make some people feel claustrophobic, given the amount of people there and the amount of infrastructure around the track, with bridges and tightly packed viewing areas. Onto the track itself now, and just for a start off, a very rare thing to find on street tracks, a pit lane which runs directly alongside the main straight with basically no histrionics whatsoever. I mean, it looks pretty darn tight, but crucially, it was more than usable. The pit entrance and exit were also pretty normal as well, no concerns at all about merging off and on the track into the path of onrushing cars. Down the fairly wide start finish straight you go, driving underneath bridges and structures like this one which I have absolutely no idea how to describe, before heading to turn 1. It's the fastest corner on the track, which is saying something for sure considering that the turn could be even faster if it was profiled differently. In the end it becomes a bend where you can't take the curb whatsoever, otherwise you end up in Tech Pro, as well as also being a hotspot for trouble. Furthermore this corner also included tracks, on the track. These ones though would be used for trams when the barriers weren't there. Although I would like to point out that according to this very clear arrow, the drivers are going the wrong direction. Once you get past turn 1, all semblance of width fades away. A fairly standard 90 degree left hander follows, yep it's another one of these again, albeit it does seem like one of the faster 90 degree corners racing has ever had. Next up is another 90 degree left hander, which leads you off the road called Dryconigstrasse? If I've completely and utterly butchered that name then I do apologise, however if you've seen this channel before then that shouldn't come as a surprise to you. Although at least they're heading the right way this time. Oh no, spoke too soon, never mind. Onto the short straight you head before reaching yet another 90 degree left hander as you steadily get into narrower and narrower roads. A 90 degree right hander this time before a fourth 90 degree left hander follows that. After saying the term 90 degree, 7 times in a space of around 45 seconds, if that, luckily there aren't any more of those things to contend with. Exiting the turn brings you to a section of track where light ceases to exist, where trees rule the roost. Unless you're a Formula E driver, where you have a temporary right-left-right chicane which rules the land. If I were to search up the definition of finicity on the interweb, then more than likely this is the picture that would show up. I imagine it was put there because the longer straight that would result from it not being there would drain the energy levels down a fair amount, hence reducing the race distance. Which is fair enough, but goodness me it did look slow and awkward from a TV perspective. 
Width is luckily regained somewhat as you silently go down the straight towards the last meaningful corner on the circuit in turn 10. A heavy braking zone leads you to a hairpin which, particularly from an onboard shot, looks a heck of a lot tighter than it actually is. Probably the best place on the track to attempt to pass, which perhaps isn't surprising given the rest of the circuit. Oh, and at least they're definitely going in the correct direction this time. Pass the what look like fancy hospitality suites to the left and top hand side before you go through turn 11, which like I iterated earlier is basically non-existent, before we arrive back on the start finish straight to finish a lap of the Zurich Street Circuit. Now I have to say, on the surface, this event seemed like a massive success. It was the return of motorsport to a country that hadn't had any since the mid-1950s, and perhaps most impressively, the crowd figures were a quite frankly astonishing 150,000 people. That's half of an Indy 500 crowd for an event which has one less mile of tarmac than the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, around a place that looks as though it could only just comfortably hold about 50,000 people. However, it was really awesome to see the spectators show their support for the return of racing to the country, and indeed this event, which should be a great indication that this event had a long and prosperous future. Sadly not. Maybe this event would have continued had it not been for the several other big events that the city was hosting, and the city officials thought that its infrastructure wouldn't be able to cope, hence why the event would be moved in 2019 to another Swiss city, in Bern which I imagine will feature in this series at some point, and the event at Zurich hasn't returned since. As for my thoughts on the track itself, it's not too bad really, possibly the best pit lane we've had so far in this series for sure. However, the track is let down somewhat by an abundance of 90 degree corners and a really tight chicane. It was definitely held in picturesque settings, with even a large body of water not too far away, yet for a very brief period, Zurich had more pieces of bodywork than it did bodies of water. That though is going to be it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you have any other street tracks you'd like to see featured in this series, then for this episode only, keep them to yourselves, otherwise I'll get confused as to whether they're track requests or questions for the Q&A. Thanks again for the 10,000 subscribers, you lot are amazing. However, until the next video, be kind to each other and enjoy the rest of your day.